what to expect when you enter a fishing tournament. For myself, I only started fishing them a couple years ago, and I've never fished in a walleye tournament or any other fishing tournament before. So this video is just about my experience in the most recent walleye tournament I entered, give you an idea of what it's like, what you might need, what you need to do. So for this tournament, I've signed up for the Sask Landing Walleye Tournament. This is run by the Saskatchewan Walleye Trail, where they have several tournaments every year. If you go to their website, they'll be able to see all the tournaments. Once you find a tournament you want to go on, you click on the rules and regulations, check them all out, make sure that you can comply with them, get your entry fee ready, which is usually anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars. It really depends on the type of organization and who's running it. Find a partner and a boat, and you're ready to go into the walleye tournament. So the thing you have to understand about fishing tournaments is that the locals will always have the huge advantage. So if this is your first time fishing on the lake, you better get out there and do some pre-fishing to find out where these walleyes are located, what they are biting on, and how the conditions might change. For Mike and myself, on the first day, we find out that the water is like chocolate. So we need to figure out how to get the walleyes to bite in these conditions. Finally caught a fish. <laughs> it's been a while. It took a while to get that first fish, and we found the walleyes were not biting in the heavier, muddier water. So we gotta go down the lake and find where the water starts to clear up a bit. Put through quite a few here, so. Yeah. Skinny, but Well, there's going over some nice ones right there. Yeah, 45 and a half. Awesome. Yeah. All right, finally a decent one. <laughs> oh, he's tiny. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you flip him. Okay. Decent Baker Walleye. I hope that's not the biggest one we get, but pretty decent. The fish. Goodbye, buddy. <laughs> Having good maps of the lake and using your electronics effectively will increase your chances of catching fish that will count in the tournament. However, you are playing catch up compared to all of those local fishermen that have been fishing the lake every oh, yeah, weekend for the last right 20 there. years. Right in front of us. We're going through a school. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, yeah, look at it. Oh, there we go. I just got hit. Better. Stop passing it. They're gonna lose the fish that way. <laughs> yeah, that was my fish, by the way. <laughs> Likely. Nice. Quick measurement. Yep. Probably 45 as well. Maybe 46. Cool. For this tournament, we're allowed four fish under 55 centimeters and one over 55. Every walleye oh, tournament yeah. may have different rules like this depending on the local fishing regulations and how they want anglers targeting the walleye in the lake. That's the smallest one of the day. <laughs> Nothing huge. Just a little guy. <laughs> oh. Here, I'll take him. You can get back to fish. <laughs> they like my orange rig. Better, but still pretty small. Like a 40. It's always nice to be catching a bunch of fish during free fishing, but we gotta keep moving. The more you move, the more potential spots you can find for that fishing day tournament.
Yep. Oh yeah, baby. Beat that. <laughs> Except the one I got. Oh, that's heavier. Oh, I lost them. I lost them. I lost them. I lost them. Damn it. Lost them. That was a heavier fish. Oh, you got him. You did too. <laughs> my, line, my line's right there, yeah. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. Better fish, huh? So we uh, had pretty good pre-fishing. Found some fish, nothing huge. We know what the fish are biting on and where they're at. Uh, again, tomorrow some more pre-fishing. Hopefully find some more spots that we can fish them at. But going all the way down the lake, we thought we would, could run out of gas because we made some bad calculations. However, Mike knows about fuel economy and taught me about fuel economy. So we came back nice and slow, saved on gas, was able to get back here no problem. However, we found another boat out on the lake as we're coming back out of gas. So we're just going to grab some jerry cans here and go take them some gas. Look, a little swollen. If I drop one, she's going to blow. <laughs> It's always important to remember when you're on the water and boating that if you see someone that is in need of assistance, you're obligated to go over and see if you can help in any way possible. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, we greatly really appreciate it. I will work up with you. Yeah. I like to try and stay prepared for any eventuality. So not only did we have an extra jerry can that we could give to this boat, we have a second one that we're going to use to fill up my boat so we can stay out for a few more hours and find a couple more fish. How much does that work out to be 15 for? 15 miles. 5 gallons, right? Look for the gas tank, how much can the gas tank take you? 35? Yeah. Uh, at 3? That's uh... <laughs> <laughs> 90, 115, 190. Little guy. Oh, the smallest of the day, maybe. <laughs> that is a small fish. It's a sauger. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh. That's awesome. That's why you're so small. Day two of pre fishing. Let's hope it goes uh, a little bit better. It wasn't too bad the day before, but we'll get some more fish today. For pre-fishing, you want to get out to the lake at least by the time the tournament would start. That way you know where the fish might be located the next day, if they've moved up or down in the structure, and you have a good chance of hitting the same pattern that you were hitting the day before. For day two of our pre-fishing, we're going to go to completely different spots, try and see if we can find some fish, use the same patterns as the day before, and make sure they're still catching fish. Once we've established we can still catch fish on the same pattern, then we can start trying different colors and techniques to give us more options on tournament days. <laughs> hey. You think that's mountable? Oh, that's got some length to it. That's a nice one. 
Catch release. Once again on day two, it took us a bit of time to find some fish that were willing to bite. Since this tournament focuses on having four fish under 55 centimeters, we need to know the length of the fish that we're pulling in during pre-fishing, so if there are larger pods or smaller pods of fish, and if we should be coming back to them on tournament day. Shut up. Stop asking it, Stop asking <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a 10 inch or 10 cent. That's 11 and a half. That's a nice, nice perch. Very nice perch. <laughs> not fighting like a walleye. It's fighting like something else. It is something else. I don't know what it is. It's a gold eye, I think. Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's what we're seeing. That's what they're fat. <laughs> That's my first gold eye or moon eye, whatever it is. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> and kind of, I guess, fortunate. Now we know what's taking her bait and I went after what's her. <laughs> Part pre-fishing for this tournament is done. However, remember that pre-fishing is always optional. You don't have to go pre-fish if you're going to go into a tournament. Since we've never been on this lake before, we wanted to make sure we get out there and see if we can find the fish before trying to fish for them in the tournament. In all of the tournaments I've been in, there's a rules meeting the night before the tournament. But in addition to this tournament, there is also a boat parade they put on for the community and kids. This was a lot of fun and had a great time coming down and seeing all the kids. A lot of the boats like ours are stocked up full of candy that we're throwing out to the kids. After the parade, there is the rules meeting, a raffle, and a dinner to raise money for the local community and organizations. Here you can ask any last minute questions you have about the tournament or any rules clarified that you may have questions about. So this is my part one of what to expect in a fishing tournament. There's lots of different kinds and lots of different formats, but this is my experience and what I see when I go out to one of these fishing tournaments. So the next video coming up soon will be part two and the actual day one and day two of the fishing tournament. Let's see how we do.